Hi, I'm Stuart Black. I'm the game director on Body Count uh, from uh, Codemasters Gopher Studio. What you do in this game, you shoot a lot, a lot of guns. Uh, but it's all about having outrageous fun with the gun, right? We want to make you have a really good time shooting things. Consequence-free shooting is one of what we want to have. Uh, it's a, a real strong sense of escapism for you. When you've had a hard, hard day at work, at college, hassle with your parents, your girlfriend, whatever, you can come home, slap on body count, feel empowered and, you know, ready to face the world again. Be aware that you're in a hostile zone and that you are hot. You play a guy called Jackson Delgado, um, you're a young, impetuous hotshot, right? Um, kind of a hapless hero kind of guy, used to get himself into crazy situations and being able to, to figure his way out of them. But he's, he's, he's got made an offer by this group called The Network, and he, he said yes when he should have said no, right? He's got himself in way over his head and, and lost control of the situation. John? you to be aware that your life expectancy has dropped dramatically. He's what we call a combat adept, somebody who's got a natural affinity and ability in combat situations. So he kind of enjoys the situation he's in, right? He's kind of finding the measure himself within it, but he doesn't like the loss of control that he has in it, right? He really just kind of wants to get out of this and try and maintain a higher level of awareness of what's going on, but instead he's like stuck down in the mud of the situation he's in. We have what we call a class-based enemy system, right? Where, yeah, we've got, we got our cannon fodder guys, kind of like local militia guys that are really dumb. They, they rake up the ground, they're really inaccurate, they reload out in the open and things. And then you've got your, 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 your military soldiers, a bit more trained, they'll use cover, they always reload from behind cover, they're much more accurate in the firing. And then we have some fun classes, we have medic classes, uh, scavengers who run around the battlefield scooping up all the intel, which is kind of like your cash in the game. It's good to be working with you today. And if they collect enough of that, they're going to be able to call in airstrikes against you, and uh, various other classes as well that we'll talk about in the ensuing months, I think. When we did Back Black, people were quite disappointed that there wasn't a multiplayer component, and you know, back in, back then we simply couldn't sync up the physics uh, across all the machines. So that was, that, was a, uh, that was a top priority goal for us to be able to do that on body count. And, and we actually we managed to achieve it really quickly. We were quite surprised at how, how simple it was actually to, to sync up now on the, uh, on the PSP and the 360. So we've been running around with 12-player um, multiplayer for a good couple of months now. And that, that's really interesting to see, because we, we, we shred so much of the world. Yeah? It's really interesting to keep persistence of that, of that destruction over subsequent rounds. And it really changes up how you play the game. So when you start, and it's a nice pristine world, combat range is quite small, you're using SMGs and shotguns a lot, because they rip through the environment really quickly and, you're, and your combat range is quite tight. As that world starts to rip down, as the walls get shredded and, and some of the cover, cover objects get shredded, your combat range increases and you're more into the assault rifles, right, where you've got that good mid-range, it's not so much about being able to turn really fast. And then as, as, as it's pretty much starting to get really eroded, you can lo look right through a building, through three or four rooms in a building, right, from one side to the other, and that's when the sniper rifles and stuff like that really come into play, right, and you're sniping people, headshotting them 50, 60 yards away or so, so have you. So that's been interesting to see how that changes, and the tactics people have, right, some sneaky guys, crawl down, pop a little hole in the bottom of a wall, right, and just sit there, and you come running around just shooting you from below and whatnot. So it's been fun to see how tactics have evolved with the density of shredding that we've got. People are going to pay $50 for this game, and I, I want to, as much as possible to let them have their experience, play the way they want to play. It really frustrates me when I get a game and it's like, the only way you can do things is the way the designer prescribed it to do. You know, it only plays out this one way. I want to give them a, a, a wide corridor of options. If you want to be, you're the kind of guy who likes to sneak around and pop people in the head and take it slowly, well, that's fine, you go ahead and play it that way. If you want to run around like an idiot with guns waving around, right? Fine, you can do that as well, right? We, our, we want our gameplay to be robust enough, and, our, and particularly our AI. I mean, it's not really emergent AI, but there's you know, a little element of that to it. But we certainly want them to be uh, uh, robust enough that they can improvise in all those different kinds of situations and still maintain you know, uh, continuity and, and, and give, you, give you a really solid firefight, whichever way you want to play it. Body count coming at you sometime next year in the first half, sometime before the summer next year.